match that was with uh, this is Yar and no can you this is Yar the Blazing coming from a match point down to be the reigning world champion that was a thriller so after that men's singles we turn our attention back to women's singles and it's Lena Kiersfeld from Denmark up against Tai Su Ying the two-time former champion of the Indonesia Open after that, there's the men's singles, then men's doubles, men's singles again, and we finish with men's doubles. But this is the women's singles draw so far, and three of the four quarterfinals have been concluded, and three Chinese players through to the semi-final stage, as indeed was the case last week at the Indonesia Masters. So, who will join them? Will it be the two-time former champion, Tai Su Ying, the world and olympic silver medalist or will it be lena kiersfeld who's in her first women's singles quarter final here at the indonesia open well as far as lena kiersfeld is concerned uh, trying to become the first dane to reach the women's singles semi-final since the inception of the Super Series and now World Tour, so going back to 2007, the Super Series. But in fact, the last time that a Dane was in the semi-final of the women's singles here was when Camilla Martin actually went on to win the title 22 years ago, 2000. So it's uh, a huge opportunity for Lena Kersfeld, but let's uh, not underestimates the former world number one, Tai Su Ying, who is in her sixth quarter final here at this particular event. As far as Lena Kiersfeld is concerned, it's her fourth appearance, uh, two second round losses and a first round loss. But here's a little fun fact for you, Steen. It is in fact Lena Kiersfeld's second quarter final because no, no, no. quarter-final here at the oh. Indonesian Open because back in 2016, as a qualifier, uh, she reached the quarter-final of the mixed doubles with Kim Astrup. And what a tournament they had. They lost out in the end to Lu Kai and Wang Yaxiong, but in the first round, they'd beaten Tang Chung Men and Si Yun Sit. And then in the second round, uh, they beat the number two seeds, Tantoi Akmad and Liliana Nasia who a couple of months later went on to take the Olympic gold medal. Incidentally, Liliana Natsi is uh, going to be inducted into the Hall of Fame tomorrow. And uh, very richly deserved, I have to say. When you look at uh, the fact uh, of what she's won over her career, two Olympic finals, one gold medal, five World Championship Finals, four gold, seven medals in total for Liliana Nassia, four consecutive All England Finals, winning three consecutive titles, 88 career finals, 51 titles, and 46 of those 88 were either at Super Series or World Tour level, 24 finals at Super Series or World Tour. It's going to be a special occasion tomorrow when Liliana Nasir is inducted into the Hall of Fame. But as soon as we wait for the next players on court, one has to say about Liliana Nasir, it's not just her results that make her stand out in, in badminton terms. It is also, I think, her style of play. She made it look so effortless. She always seemed to be in the right place at the right time. And I think also her conduct, as she always played in such a sportsman-like uh, fashion. I can't ever remember her getting involved in any sort of an argument. And I think all of that, the results, her style of play, and also her conduct, most definitely make her one of the all-time greats. Yeah, I totally agree. I think they were lucky that the Danes wasn't qualified for the Olympics. 
<laughs> no, they played extremely well. They uh, they won it without conceding a game in 2016. Yeah, yeah, remarkable. Yeah. Well, we last weekend we saw the retirement ceremony for Gracia Poli. What a career she's had, and Liliana Nasia. Well. All of those uh, mixed doubles titles I was talking about. But also, we shouldn't forget that she won two Super Series women's doubles titles. China, exactly. China Open and this one as well. The first in women's doubles to win in China for ages. The first foreign uh, combination to win in China for ages. Yeah. When uh, she and Marisa won, was it Mar China Masters? I think it was the, uh, the China Masters, but it was definitely here as well. Yep. Yeah, quite a remarkable player. Let's talk a little bit more about uh, uh, some of the matches coming up, Steen. I mean, obviously, uh, we're waiting for yeah. Tai Su Ying against Nina Kiersfeld, but then we've got uh, the Olympic gold medalist against the Olympic bronze medalist. And Victor Axelson, the current world number one, has looked imperious in the last... I was going to say a few months, I think I mean about 18 months, two years, don't I? Yeah, he, he's looked good. Um, he, he's lost a match here and there, but overall he's looked like uh, clearly the best player since um, since we started out in uh, January 2021 in, uh, in Thailand. He came back there and, um, and looked in extremely good shape. Um, but it's going to be interesting because it's Anthony Ginting, Ginting lost out last week now he's had a chance to look at the video same arena and um i thought he played um, he played well against uh Wittin, who was in, and looked in good shape and so on so that's going to be interesting uh no matter who wins their their match tomorrow against lisi jar whom we just saw yeah um that that upper half of the draw is amazing, and and the lower, the lower part of the draw is equally uh, interesting because there's no seeded players left. Yeah. Well, talking of draws, let's talk about the women's singles draw because at the eight players at quarterfinal stage, we had the reigning Olympic champion, the reigning world champion, the reigning Asian Games champion, the reigning uh, Asia champion, and the defending champion. And that is five different players holding those five different titles yeah. in the quarterfinal stage. Add to that the winner of the three previous Indonesia Opens, three Olympic medalists at quarterfinal stage, one from 2016, not from the last Olympics, but three Olympic medalists. And when you add up all the World Championship, Asian Championship and European Championship medals, 28 medals between the eight players in the quarter-final stage. That's fairly extraordinary, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It is. And I also noticed that, um, that China is um, playing well in women's singles again at the moment. They've had um, a period where they haven't been dominating, but um, they're having some good players again now. Yeah, they certainly are. Three. Chinese players already through to tomorrow's semi-final. But here is Lena Kiersfeld of Denmark. And as I was saying, trying to uh, become the first semi-finalist from Taipei. her country in the women's singles semi-final here for 22 years. But here is Dr. Tai Su Ying. Recently completed her PhD and now holds the title, therefore, of doctor. How she's managed to continue all of her studies and uh, be so successful as an athlete is quite beyond me, but it means that she must be an extremely organized person. But this will be a sixth meeting between these two players and Tai Su Ying has won all five previous matches. The last time being in the second round of the Malaysian Masters 500 event in 2019. Three games it was in Kuala Lumpur. 
41 minutes only for those three games, though, at the Malaysia Masters. Well, she looks a little bit nervous to me, does Lena Kersfeld. Now, it would be understanding when you've never beaten your opponent on the other side of the net. But Lena Kersfeld is 28 years of age, born in Aarhus, which is where we had the Thomas and Uber Cup finals last year. She is currently 33 on the world ranking, did spend one week as world number 16. That was right at the end of July 2019. This is actually her second quarter-final at Super 1000 or Premier Super Series level. The previous occasion was the 2016 China Open. Now, as you can see, beat Lian Tan of Belgium in the first round and a fantastic win over the former champion and former world number one and world champion, Raksha of Intanon. First win in her third meeting against the player from Thailand, 22-20 in the deciding game. So here is Tai Su Ying, who will turn 28 in three days' time on Monday. Born in Kaohsiung, and uh, she is currently number two on the world ranking, having spent an incredible 213 weeks as world number one. Twice winner of this event, 2016 and 2018, and in her first round match, she beat uh, Yeo Chua Min from Singapore, and then beat Aris Wang from America in three games in yesterday's encounter. Ready to play. So a sixth quarter final at the Indonesia Open for Tai Su Ying is pretty special. Silver medalist, as we look at our court officials. A silver medalist at the Olympics last year, Tai Su Ying, and also at the World Championships. But she is the most successful women's singles player in the history of the Super Series and now World Tour. And if you count Super Series and World Tours together, of, as far as the World Tour is concerned, of level one to four, that Tai Su Ying is clearly the most successful player in the history of women's singles. Second player, Steen. Chinese player. Oh, Wang Yihan? Yep, Wang Yihan. Ladies and gentlemen, on my right, Lina Gormack-Karsfeld, Denmark. And on my left, Tai Tzu Ying, Chinese Taipei. Tai Tzu Ying to serve, level, play. So the two-time former champion Tai Su Ying nearest to us getting this quarter-final underway. Well, Steve, you and I have talked on many an occasion about the delightful racket skills of Tai Su Ying and every shot imaginable in her repertoire and I think that alone is going to be a bit of an issue uh, for Kiersfeld do, do you think? I think so, I think maybe that's because the nervous looking uh, approach uh, or uh, the attitude towards the match, of course you're, you're nervous about the match but you also know that when you play Tai Su Ying a number of times during that match, you're going to look a little bit like Bambi. Yeah. Uh, because um, she simply has so many disguises. And I mean, 
footwork is not uh, the key competence of uh, Nina Kersberg. She's an excellent uh, technical player, good read of the game. Uh, but uh, let's see, she's played um, a couple of good tournaments here. Yeah, second quarter final in two weeks. Lost out to Herbing Zhao of China a week ago at this stage. In three games, right? No, it was two games. Two games. 22, 20, and 14. Uh, so the drifty uh, conditions actually um, served Lena reasonably well. She played. Good tournament at the European Championship in Madrid. Where it was also quite windy, and she was actually in a, in a good position against Carolina Marin, leading 9-5 in the uh, deciding game in the quarterfinal. Uh, I think she should have made a little bit more of that, but I think she, she was a little bit um, surprised by herself uh, at that time. But um, normally they're not at the same level. These two players. So um, Ty is also one who is uh, really strong in, um, in drifty conditions. How many times has she won Indonesia Open? Twice. Yeah. Service over. Plus one, Asian Games. Five. Plus the Asian Games. In the same arena. But uh, just picking up on your point about uh, Kersfeld and her liking this arena, uh, back in 2020, uh, before the pandemic at the Indonesian Masters, uh, she beat the number one seed in the first round, Chen Ufei. Oh, Chen Ufei. Wow. She came just off a win in uh, Malaysia and was, I think, in all fairness, she was a little bit um, tired when she arrived there. Isn't that correct? She played, at least played the final. I think she won it. Chen Ufei. Chen Ufei. Yeah, now, now that's a nice Three, angle. Five. Oh, that's a beauty. The retrieval. Four, five. Yeah, it wasn't just the retrieving, was it? She looked as if she was going to lift the shuffle with a bit of a swing of the racket. Look at that, and then plays it back to the net. That really is a super shot. Five straight points to Tai Su Ying, followed by five straight points from Nina Kiersbelt. Oh, my goodness. Well, you there said there would be occasions See. when she looks like Bambi. Oh. That was more like Bambi on ice. That's exactly <laughs> the case. The first Bambi moment. And, I mean, everybody's going wrong sometimes when they play Tai Su Ying. Just wide. Seven, five. that Tai Su Ying chose to start on this uh, near side here, but 
been wanting a good start and also quite good at um, playing with the drift. So in uh, the second game, she's going to play with the uh, drift alongside the court. But it's actually the first time these two players are playing on court one this week. Service over. Six, seven. on court three in the previous matches and uh, I'm not sure how the drift is there but on court two I'm quite certain that it's the opposite way around with the long side court so maybe um, it's been the same way on, so we on court three we can't rule that eight, out here in uh, six. the store up. that was an absolutely delightful backhand take a look at this look at the racket head control to play that cross court an even better defensive Nine, shot there. Six. Nice. I was telling you about her mixed doubles exploits at the Indonesia Open, reaching the quarterfinal with Kim Astrup, but she's medalled at junior European championships in all three disciplines. But since she's become a senior, she's concentrated mainly. She needed to have a, a couple of attempts at mixed doubles. Uh, there, there was... Um some uh, occasions where uh, the national um, team management has wanted her to um, change to uh, basically change to women's double, uh, but she wouldn't. It was not an option of playing the mixed doubles with uh, Kim Astrup because she only plays one category, and that's the men's doubles. I think that that was probably something that could have tempted her to to play with Kim, uh, who she played with in her junior days, and uh, a very good matchup in the mix. Those two. Yeah, and they won the gold medal at the European Junior Championships in 2011 in Finland. It's gone along. 11 eight. And it's the mid-game interval with a three-point advantage, Kai Su Ying. som bliver for kort. Det er helt rigtigt spillet. Hvis vi rører op og tager chancen, når vi hænger, så risikerer vi, at vi skal... Court 1, 20 seconds. Court 1, 20 seconds. Um, well, nine. discussing with uh, Dina Kersfeldt um, 
I only managed to catch one thing, and that was when she was in trouble in one of the rallies where she'd played it high up under the roof. He said that was the right choice because trying to play a good shot would only make the next one even more difficult. Service over. Then, well. Has to be careful though, because she's hitting with the drift, is she not? She's hitting with the drift, yeah. Yeah. They've got to hit it really high. Yeah. And I, mean, I, think, I guess also the last meter in terms of the back line is not really important because Ty has the uh, deceptions to. I mean, basically, she decides whether it's a good shot or not. And uh, it's hope to survive. 13, 10. I like the idea, but of course the sideways drift. She wasn't taking that into consideration. No, but the length was good on um, on those three clears there from a Danish perspective. Um, I especially like that last punch clear, played with deception, fast clear. If it stays in, it's difficult because then Ty has to get it uh, a little bit into the court to sort of uh, compensate for the sideways drift, but this is a little bit um, too Maybe. aggressive. In my opinion, I would say more like a controlled uh, attack that would be um, preferable for uh, Casper. With the touch Ty has just on the first um, defense there. Service over. 11. 15. Yeah, clearly in. Service over. 16, 11. One still feels that Tai Su Ying has got another couple of gears she could go up. Yes, I agree. I don't know if the Danes hope that um, she sort of um, gets into this. Sometimes we see Tai get on a, a roll of uh, well, mystical errors 16. where it's like it's too easy sometimes. So she's got to try and want to do something herself, but she hasn't made anyone um, so far. Yeah. 17. So this return for the uh, textbooks. of the last seven points that's really made a huge impact, hasn't it? Yeah. You know, you work your opponent for the first half of the game, and now Tai Su Ying just easing away. That's well played. Yeah, very well played from Lena Kersfeld. So so she can get to the net 13, in balance 18. and play from just around tape level. Um, then there is uh, some possibilities, at uh, least in, um, in the pace the match is uh, played in at the moment. Yeah. Boy, that's a fantastic deception. <laughs> Service over. Wonderful. 
from Tennessee. Yeah, she looks so casual about it too. Brilliant. Yeah, good pace and goes to all four corners that shot. Brilliant. Oh, challenge. I yeah. saw that is in. Yeah, she is challenging. Titan challenges. Cold out. You think it was in too, Steve? Yeah, I, I, I think there's a good chance that it touched the outer side of the line. Maybe half of it in, the other half out. Uh, with thumb on the line. Great challenge. Game point opportunities then. Game point. Thirteen. Play. Oh my goodness. Game. That is sensational. Twenty-one thirteen opening game. First what a game. beautiful cross court team. net shot. To close 13. out game number one, take a look at this. Last moment, just turning that racket head to play at cross court. That is a beauty. Delightful. Just about 17 minutes for the opening game, 21-13. an awful lot of talking. He doesn't usually say awfully much during the timeouts, but he seemed to be doing quite a lot of talking there. I don't suppose you heard anything that Thomas Stangor was saying. Well, it was a little bit about the uh, mid-court game. Second game. He felt that, uh, it was important for Casper to sort of take the pace out of the shuttle and, um, Play. and hope for, for errors from, um, from Tai Xu Ying. Oh my goodness me, what on earth was she thinking One there? Bounce in terms, that wasn't close. Sorry, Steve. Yeah, I'm that, that was um, played soft and, and uh, hoped that Ty was the one who first went for um, a good shot. And uh, yeah, well, she usually is, and she usually does. I, uh, I think. I think it would be important to try and put some pressure on, on Tai Su Ying. If she's got too much time, then it's really, really dangerous. On the other hand, you cannot lose your balance whilst trying to put pressure on her. And then overcome the front court. I mean, you've got to be um, willing to look completely stupid on the back court. But it's um, it's the front court that is um, 
the most dangerous. One, could perhaps if, two. if Tasha Ying is on the front court, then we've seen her with some good deceptions to the back court. But she's playing with the drift now, and if she can control it, well then congratulations. You've got to see if you can get yourself an advantage somewhere. The second time that Three, she's one. controlled that perfectly, Tasha Ying. First time with the service. Nice, very nice. That is a super angle from Kearsfield. Yeah, that's the third time, Steam. Perfect control and, and on the lane. And that's why she's so good in drifty conditions, because she's got the technical skills to sort of adjust her game. That little deception that comes on the clear, uh, the, um, the lift or the flat um, shot from uh, Tai Su Ying is meant to take power off the shot. Yeah, that's nice. Service over. Three, four. Attack too much, yeah. That's good pressure. Oh, that's a pity. Six, three. Oh. Yeah, well, good defence initially so from Tai Su Ying. Oh, that's Four, wonderful pressure six. from Kersfeld. I'm actually very impressed with Kearsfeld. She's she's playing a, a quicker pace than I expected. Yeah, I, w I would say that um, they've succeeded in sort of um, she has succeeded in sort of taking the pace out of uh, the match so that she can service over uh, sort of match Seven, the pace that it's five. played in. But I, I agree, and uh, we saw it yesterday um, against Rachinov as well that um, she seems to be moving better. I'm also, uh, I was really thinking, yes, she is moving well, but what I was thinking about was her pace of shot. Oh yeah, the pace of shot, is, that's always, in my opinion, been, um, Eight, been very good. It's the, uh, it's the footwork, that's the challenge. She read that all the way. Tyson, you know. Yeah, she was moving. Yeah. But it, it was a clever Five. serve, wasn't it? Because it was. she just angled it further out wide towards the forehand side. But look, she was ready and waiting for that lift across court. 
What was the ball on the back line there? Uh, it was long. Well, I tend to agree, but I, I didn't see it. She didn't. Uh, the the oh. line judge yeah. didn't didn't make a call. No, I can't see the, the line judge, but uh, I can see arms, and there was no call initially. Outside the picture ties um, out. Consulting a coach. And again, like we, we rarely see them talk that much, yeah. and almost never in the rallies. Well, that's good. Uh, that's a good challenge. Correction in. Service over. Six nine. Play. everything about it it's played with the backhand there's deceptions on it and it goes to the front court it cannot be done any better yeah super shot service over seven ten Su Ying with a four point advantage, having already won the first. Backhand. Good rally. Fabulous once more from Lena Kersfeld. Now, is that along the lines of what the coach was talking about? Yeah, it is a little bit. I think they're going to try and put pressure on that backhand there. There we see it. And twice, Lena has now played the cross. Um, Whenever Tasha Ying is real under pressure, she's playing it straight. When she's got a little bit better time, it's going cross, and, and Kersberg needs to be alert to that. Um, and then they're talking about that she's hitting almost everything Nine, at the moment. Kersberg feels that she's sort of like uh, moving in her feet in the wrong direction before she can go in the right direction because she can't see the, the deceptions. But want to play here from side to side. Service ball ball. Talked uh, about a flicker. Fold. Service over. We talked about a flicker once in a Twelve, while, but uh, not the uh, fault. Tai Ying to that backhand corner there and 
the uh, biggest. Yeah, okay. She was under a lot of pressure, so it could have been the uh, the long straight, perhaps. Um, it's not easy. All round the Tyson Ying is good. I think a bit of both. Yeah. <laughs> This is almost, I mean, we're, we're not done yet, are we? But almost a mirror image of the opening game where it was uh, all. Yeah, oh. Just ridiculous challenge, surely. Let's get a break. I think if, if she does have any chance of of stealing a game here, then she's got to play the drift. She's got to put pressure. She's got to get help from the drift, make the shot come quicker on Tyson Ying's side. So whenever there's a chance, attack the backhand side of uh, Tyson Ying, either with the smash One, or with these three. flat uh, pushes. She's controlled the drift, the sideways drift, quite Fifteen, well. Dina Casper. But um, uh, she needs play. to play with a little bit more risk, uh, in my opinion. Yeah, well, well it is following. she hasn't done it. It is following the pattern no. of the opening game, very close to the sort of mid-game interval. 11-9 it was, and now all of a sudden it's 16-9. Opening game, it was 12-10, and then all of a sudden, 18-12. Oh, it's gone long. Service over, 10-16. To that gas belt, there was 16. so much deception on the shot from uh, Tai Su Ying. just simply too many errors from yeah, the, the midpoint of the second Eight, game onwards. It's 11. just and been error. strewn with errors. And errors that is never winners. Yeah. So the ability to play the controlling game at a higher pace, that is, um, so that is one of the things that's been missing. Well, from uh, Casper. on that final kill, keeping it straight. Over. 19, 12. Two points away from a fourth semi-final at the Indonesia Open. Service over. 13, 
19. And we're basically in garbage time now, where perhaps a few points could go uh, Kasper's way to make the scoreline a little bit more respectable, but I think uh, the match is decided. So it's over. 20 match points. 37 match point opportunities for Tai Su Yi. Only needed the one. Symmetry in the scoreline. 21-13, 21-13 in a match lasting 36 minutes. Match point, and Tai Ying moves hugely popular 13. all over the world. Will tomorrow contest a fourth semi-final at the Indonesia Open. The two-time former champion, she's looking good. And I still believe she had an extra couple of gears she could go to. But making it look comfortable with that victory over Lena Kersfeld. So confirmation of the score. 37 minutes in total for 21-13, 21-13. Welcome back to Estora Sanayan, quarterfinals day here at the East Ventures Indonesia Open. After the women's singles, we uh, turn our attention back to men's singles, and it's the battle of the Olympic medalists because it's the Olympic gold medalists and the defending champion here, Victor Axel.